DBE grade 12 2020 or 2020 paper paper 1 and today I'm discussing question 6 right question 6.1 now on January 2020 Chapel made the first of his monthly deposits of a thousand rand into a savings account. He continues to make the monthly deposits of 1,000 at the end of each month, right up to the 31st of January 2032. The interest rate was fixed at 7.5% per annum, compounded monthly. Now what will the investment be worth immediately after the last deposit? And if he makes no further payments, but leaves the money in the account, how much money will be in the account on the 31st of January? Now, students normally have a problem with which formula to choose. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, then you will notice that on top I have three formulas there, right? First one deals with simple interest, that's growth, because it's a plus. This is decay, also simple, but there's a minus. Then this is a minus, so it is compound decay, and it is compound growth. Then you also have future value formula and present value formula. And usually, you must decide which of these formulas am I going to use. Now, the first three there, of course, was what you've done in grade 10, 11, and 12, and grade 9, 10, and 11, these two formulas are your two grade 12 formulas. Now, if you go back to the example, and the secret is, if they say that uh, monthly deposits is made, and that is the key word, if they say monthly deposits, then then should make you think of uh, most probably your grade 12 formulas, because it is where we deal with regular payments. So this then will definitely be one of these two formulas. My annuity formulas, this one for future value, and this one for present value. So in this example, of course, because we want to know what is the amount in future, you're going to choose the future value formula, which is therefore this one. Because you want to know what the amount is going to be in the future. So there you are. So remember what is important? That you need to do some calculations here. Like it is monthly, so that means remember, you must divide by 12, and also 7.5% per annum must be converted to I, which is 7.5 divided by 100. So there's the formula. Remember now that 0 0.75 comes from your value which you've divided by 100 but then it's monthly so also divide by 12 and then where's 145 coming from if you look at the time they said uh, 2020 to 2032 so how many years is that well that should be 12 years right do you agree with me from 2020 to 2032 is 12 years and if it's monthly then you need to work out what is that so it is 12 times 12 which is 144 now of course you can't you must say 145 because they told you they made chapel made the first of his deposits into a savings account so he done the deposit immediately so that will increase the period with another month. And therefore, instead of 144, we use 145. So I hope it is clear where that is coming from and where that is coming from. Then, of course, the rest is just calculator work. Put this all into your calculator and you should get this answer. So please make sure now you have the correct N and you have the correct I. Those two are very important. Make sure you understand where are they coming from. Then the next question, 6.1.2. If no further payments, if he makes no further payments, but leaves the money in the account, 
how much money will be in the account in 2033? So that's an extra year. Can you see? 2032 to 2033 is an extra year. Now remember now, there's no more. It doesn't do any deposits anymore. The money is just lying in the bank. So therefore, it is no more annuity problem, but a straightforward compound growth formula. Right. So compound growth formula, because there's no monthly payments here. Put in that value you got there. This cell remains the same. And maybe it's just one year, people. So therefore, 12 months. It's only one year, so 12 months. Put this all in your calculator, and you will get your answer. All right. Then the next question, 6.2. Jim bought a new car for 250,000 rent. The value of the car depreciates at a rate of 22% per annum annually according to the reducing balance method. Ah, there you are, reducing balance method. So that should ring a bell. After how many years will its book value be 92,537 rand and 64 cents? Now remember reducing balance, you go back to your formula sheet, then it should be this one here. This one is for reducing balance, right? So you choose the right formula. So there's the right formula, right? Remember now how do we do this? Remember now we done it before with the previous example, and of course twelve months, right? So put all of this in. Sorry, I'm sorry, wrong for wrong example. This one here, reducing balance, right? Put in your ninety-two five three seven, which was given. So this is your final amount, remember? And this is your starting or beginning amount. Right, don't forget now. Is it clear where's comma 22 coming from? You must always divide I by a hundred. If you remember, they said uh, 32%. So therefore divide by a hundred to give you 0, 0,22. Now, we want here the time after how many years? Right, so once you've done your substitution, simplify what's inside the bracket to give you 0, 0,78, divide both sides by 250,000 to give you this value. Then there's two ways to do logs. It's either you use this log method where you convert both to base 10, or you use this log method, either one on the calculator, and it should give you a 4. Right, then the next question, 6.3. Mpo is granted a loan under the following conditions. The interest rate is 11.3% per annum compounded monthly. So immediately, compounded monthly must make you think. This is most probably an annuity. The loan it is 6 years. Monthly repayments is 1,500. His first repayment is made one month after the loan is granted. So remember that now. One month after. Calculate the value of the loan and how much interest will we pay in total after the first five years. So therefore, we need to know what is the value of the loan at the moment. So in this case, people, we will have to look at the formula. Right? which deals with present. I need to know what is the present value of the loan. So it will be this formula here. So let's do it. So the loan amount is the present value formula. Right, remember now, 113, where it's coming from? This is divided by 100, don't forget now. And then of course we have a 12. 72, remember they told you, six years. So how many months in a year? 12. So 12 times 6 is 72. And uh, unlike the previous one, we don't add another month because the, the, the loan was made, payment was made a month later. So therefore 72. Put all of this into your calculator and you should get the answer of 78,173,49. Cool. Then the last question here is, how much interest will we pay in total over the first five years? Now this one's a bit tricky, so you have to be very, very careful. 
So what you must do is, we've already worked out this amount here. Now, you take that, that 1,500 installment and multiply it by 60, right? To, because that is the month, so it gives you 90,000. So divide by 60, because remember, it is done over the six years. We look at the question. The loan is over six years, but they want the first five years. So don't forget that, right? And then what you do next is then, once you have those two values, you take this 90,000 and subtract the 78 we've worked out here for five years, remember? Right? Five years and minus this one for one year. Right. Subtract both values and there you are. That answer should be the final answer. A bit of a tricky one, I know, not that easy.